In this session, we'll look at how we can export an image using a world file such that we can insert it geospatially into other drawings. On my screen, I have a drawing open. This drawing has no geometry in it just yet. It does have a coordinate system though. Just for a second, let me go over to the settings tab. I'll right click on the drawing name and I'll choose edit drawing settings. Right here, we can see the coordinate system that's assigned. Illinois State Plain, East Zone, US Foot, 983. Let me click OK. Since I have the coordinate system, I have turned on the aerial photo. I did that by coming over to the geolocation tab. And then in the online map panel, I chose the map aerial image. So we are seeing that aerial photo here in the background. Now this aerial photo represents today's conditions. Maybe I'd like to create an exhibit that shows the conditions of this site 10 years ago. I happen to have an aerial photo from 2006. I'm going to go ahead and insert that into the drawing. I'll do that by bringing up Windows Explorer. And then I'll navigate into the directory that contains my image. You can see it right here, 2006 Arial. To add this to my drawing, I will click, hold, and drag it into model space and release. I am now holding the image from my cursor. Let me click to place this in the model. I'll drag this out and click to set the scale. And then I'll press Enter to accept the default rotation angle. So here is my 10-year-old aerial photo. The problem I have is this image has no geospatial coordinates. I can't easily drop this into the drawing and have it go in in the right place. Instead, I'm going to align it manually. The nice thing is, once I align it, I can export this image with a world file, such that I can geospatially drop it into any other drawing that I want. First, we'll align this one. Let me back up. To align the image, I'll need to have some targets that are common between this image or this drawing and this image. Let me zoom in on my aerial photo. I'm going to start by creating a circle. This will be my first target. We'll draw a circle here at the center center of this existing road. I'll pull this out. I will then pan over and I will find that same spot in my 10 year old image. You can see the quality of this photo isn't as good as the Bing image that we see in the background in Civil 3D. Let me drag this out. I'll zoom out and pan over. Let's say that the area that I'm interested in for my exhibit is right here. There's been a lot of construction here in the last 10 years. So I want to make sure when I pick my target, I'm selecting an area that hasn't changed. I'm going to zoom in on this intersection and I'll create another circle, maybe at the center of this entrance, and I'll keep it aligned to the south edge of pavement. I'll make the assumption that this is not changed. Let me drag this out and click. I will then find that same location in my older image. I'll tap the spacebar to relaunch the circle command, and I will create another target right here. When I'm finished, I'll zoom out. We'll pan this over. I can now use these targets to align this image to this one. Let me open the modify panel and I'll launch the align command. I would like to align this image and my targets. We'll align them from the center of this circle to the center of this one, from the center of this circle to the center of this one. I'll press enter because I don't have any more targets. And then finally, I would like to scale my image such that it matches my target locations. Now that I'm finished, I will select these circles and we will delete them from the drawing. Let's zoom in and then I will hold the mouse wheel down to pan. And you can see that the alignment is pretty good. Now, sometimes the alignment of an image like this can be an iterative process. If you don't get it right on the money the first time, you can get it a little bit closer by picking some new targets. I'm going to stick with this alignment for right now. Let me pan this over. And you can obviously see the amount of change that's gone on in this area in the last 10 years. Let's zoom out. So now that I have this image geospatially located, I can now export this image with a world file such that I can easily place this image geospatially into another drawing. To export the image, I'm going to go to the Raster Tools tab. I have Raster Design loaded on this machine. I'll come down to the Insert and Write panel, and I'll choose the Export Image button. This will load the Raster Design module. I'm going to export this new image into the same directory as the existing one. Let me open the Files of Type. I'm going to choose TIFF in this case. You can see some of the other choices here. I will then choose Export. Since I'm exporting as a TIFF, I have several encoding methods. If you have a reason to pick one of these other ones, you certainly can do that. In this case, I'm going to go with the default. I'll click Next. Same with Data Organization. We have a couple of options here. If you have a reason to pick one of these others, you certainly can. I'm going to go with the default once again. Let me click Next. Finally, in the Export Options dialog box, this is where we create the world file. You can see there's a toggle up here in the corner, Maintain Drawing Link to Image. If I select this, what it's going to do is swap this image out with the exported one that's associated with the world file. 
In this case, I don't need to do that. Let me just leave this unchecked. Next, we can deal with any rotation. When I aligned this image to my drawing, it may have been rotated a little bit. If that's the case, would I like to burn the rotation into the image? Or would I like to include that rotation in the correlation file or the world file? Or I could export the image without any rotation. I'd like to include the rotation in the world file. Finally, in the correlation section, I will select world file, and then I'll come down and click finish. Now that I've exported the image, let's jump over to Windows Explorer. I will then navigate into that same images folder. Right here, we can see the new TIFF image and the associated world file. I'm going to open the world file by double clicking on it. This will bring it up in Notepad, and you can see there's no magic to the world file. Essentially, it includes the coordinates of the insertion point, scale information, rotation information, things like that. Let's close this. To test the new image, I'm going to create a new drawing, and then on the Settings tab, we'll assign a coordinate system. Let me right-click, and I'll choose Edit Drawing Settings. We'll use that same system, IL83-EF, and I'll click OK. To insert the image, I'm going to use the Raster Design Tools. Once again, we'll go back to the Raster Tools tab, and I'll choose Insert. From here, I will select my image, and since I'm using the world file, I'm just going to select Quick Insert, and I'll click Open. I will then double-click the mouse wheel to do a zoom extents, and we'll test things out by turning on the aerial photo. Let's zoom in. I'll hold the mouse wheel down and pan, and you can see that I have really good alignment here. Let's back up. I'd like to do one more thing. I'm going to select this image and I'll press delete. We will detach it from the drawing. I imported that image using raster design. You don't have to. In the event you're sharing this drawing with someone who has Civil 3D, they can also import the image using their map functionality. I'm going to do that by changing the workspace. Let me open this up and I'll choose planning and analysis. I will then go to the insert tab and then I'll choose image. From here, I'll select the TIFF image. If you look right down here, you can see the toggle for Modify Correlation. If I leave this selected, when I click Open, it will show me the correlation information and give me a chance to change it. Otherwise, I could remove the check and click Open, and it'll just drop the image right into the file. Let's leave this selected. I'll click Open. Here you can see the correlation data. Right here you can see the rotation was included in that correlation. This all looks good. I'm going to come down and click OK. Same as before, we'll zoom in. I'll hold down the mouse wheel. And you can see this image is aligned nicely to this file. Once again, I'm going to back up and we'll center this on screen. As you can see, I did this workflow using an aerial photo. You could also use this technique with USGS maps, soil maps, Sidwell maps, floodplain maps, basically any imagery for which you do not already have a world file. Using the raster design module, all you need is a drawing with an assigned coordinate system and a couple targets that are common between your drawing and the image you need to align. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.